Welcome to Movie and Recap. At the start of the movie, we are shown a disturbing image, where a woman has passed away due to an overdose. The photographs surrounding the scene reveal that she was a single mother raising two daughters. At that very moment, her youngest daughter, Rose, arrives at the door and gets taken aback. The scene then transitions to the present day, where Rose has become a therapist at a mental hospital. Currently, she is attending to a manic patient named Carl, who repeatedly says that he is going to die. Rose makes efforts to console him, but Carl keeps on murmuring. So, she has him admitted for a few days. After completing her work, Rose gets ready to depart but right then, she is assigned another case, involving a patient named Laura. Rose reluctantly meets her, and learns that the poor girl is suffering from bouts of depression after she witnessed her professor commit the unthinkable. Rose claims that it is normal, to be paranoid when someone dies, but Laura asserts that she is not crazy. In reality, she is acting strange because a creepy entity, with a weird smile is following her everywhere she goes. The entity takes the form of random people and says you are going to die. Soon after, Laura suddenly collapses to the floor and begins to scream as if she has seen something. Sensing the degrading situation, Rose swiftly calls for assistance. As she makes the call and turns back around, she is shocked to see Laura standing upright, appearing calm and wearing a haunting smile. Unfortunately, before help arrives, Laura takes a shard of broken potter and commits the unthinkable, leaving Rose horrified. Following this tragic incident, two detectives arrive at the hospital, one of whom happens to be Joel, Rose's former boyfriend. They ask her several questions but she is too terrified to speak. Rose only reveals that Laura had a creepy smile on her face when she committed the unthinkable. After the formalities are over, Rose finally returns home. In order to relax, she takes a shower and is about to pour herself a drink when she notices a scary sight of Laura standing in a corner. At the same time, her fiancé, Trevor, enters the room, startling her momentarily. He notices her all worried and inquires if everything is alright. In response, Rose nods her head, and changes the topic swiftly. Later that night, the couple joins Rose's sister, Holly, and her husband for a dinner outing. All of them talk about their respective work lives but Rose appears, to be distracted. She keeps remembering the harrowing scene of Laura's demise. The next day, Rose decides to return to work, but she struggles to move on from the previous incidents. Intrigued, she approaches the receptionist and requests to see the report on Gabriel, the professor who committed the unthinkable in front of Laura. While reviewing the report, Rose receives a call from Holly, who extends an invitation to her son's birthday celebration. As they talk on the phone, Rose glances out the window and notices a figure in the distance that resembles Laura. However, she dismisses it as her imagination and proceeds to check on her patients. When she passes by Carl's room, she shockingly notices him with the same, disturbing smile as Laura had. All of a sudden, he begins shouting at her, declaring that she is going to die. This terrifies Rose, so she urgently calls for nurses to restrain him. However, in a dramatic turn of events, it is revealed that Carl has been asleep all the time. Everything that happened earlier was only in her imagination. When the supervisor of the hospital, Mr. Desai learns of this, he becomes concerned for Rose's mental state, and advises her to take a week off. Later that night, Rose is alone at home when the house alarm suddenly starts beeping, causing her to panic. She cautiously heads towards the front door with a pair of scissors in hand, but realizes that it's locked. Upon returning to the living area, she discovers that the back door is open. In that unsettling moment, Rose receives a call from a security operator, who weirdly tells her to look behind her. But to make things more confusing, the phone rings again, revealing that the previous call was merely a hallucination. Rose quickly answers it and to her relief, it is a genuine security operator on the other end. In no time, several police officers arrive at her house to investigate, but they find no signs of intrusion. Trevor, also reaches the scene and worriedly asks Rose if she is fine. With a confused face, she says, yes but there is still one problem. She can't seem to find her pet cat, mustache, anywhere. Over the course of the next few days, Rose continues to experience hallucinations, leading people to view her as a mentally unstable person. Concerned about her own well-being, she seeks help from her former therapist, Dr. Madeline Northcott. Rose tells her everything, including Laura, the creepy smiles, and even her missing pet cat. She frantically says that, she is becoming paranoid by the day. Hearing all this, Dr. Madeline theorizes that she is still suffering from the traumatic death of her abusive and mentally ill mother. On the weekend, Rose attends her nephew's birthday party, even though she hasn't been feeling well. Things go well for the first few minutes, and Rose assumes that she has got rid of her hallucinations. But when her nephew opens the gift she brought for him, it reveals the lifeless body of her missing cat, Mustache. The shocking revelation sends Rose into tears as she desperately tries to convince everyone that she didn't do it. In the midst of this, she notices one of the party guests smiling at her creepily. This startles Rose horribly and she ends up breaking a glass table, injuring herself. In the next scene, Trevor brings her home after a short trip to the hospital. Before getting out of the car, Rose attempts to confide in him about the entity that's haunting her, but Trevor speculates that she may have inherited her mother's mental illness. Later, Rose continues her research on Gabriel until she hears her mother's voice calling out to her from the darkness. Determined to ignore it, she tries to go to bed, 
but a figure resembling her mother appears behind her. In the morning, Rose sets out to Gabriel's residence to gather more details about his death. Upon arrival, she is welcomed by his wife, Victoria, who discloses that the professor had also witnessed a self-kill, before committing the, unthinkable. She then leads Rose to a room, where several sketches made by Gabriel are on display. All of them have the same creepy smile on their faces. After learning all this, Rose asserts that Gabriel wasn't insane and that the experiences he had were real. She claims that. She is also going through similar occurrences. Unfortunately, this only angers Victoria, as she believes Rose is trying to make fun of her late husband. So, she kicks her out of the house. Now, with no options left, Rose approaches her ex-boyfriend, Joel, and requests a favor, to investigate cases related to Gabriel. The detective is a bit hesitant, but he agrees to do it for the sake of their past relationship. Joel then accesses reports, on his laptop and discovers that the professor had witnessed a woman named Angela committing the unthinkable. He then conducts a similar research on the woman, and coincidentally finds that she had also witnessed a self-inflicted death. When they view the recorded footage, they see a man smiling before committing the unthinkable in front of Angela. Following this, Rose returns home with the intention of revealing everything to her fiancé. However, her plans are disrupted when she discovers that Trevor has brought Dr. Madeline to check on her. He believes that she has gone mental. This enrages Rose and she accuses Trevor of abandoning her during her time of need. She then storms off and goes to Holly's place, hoping to get some support from her. Rose eagerly shows her sister the printed images of the other victims, explaining how she got her patient's curse. However, Holly dismisses the notion of curses, and compares her with her late mother. This triggers a wave of anger within Rose, who has reached her breaking point of being constantly pushed around by everyone. As a result, she chastises her sister, calling her self-centered and egoistic. Rose then returns to her car and tries to calm herself down. Suddenly, Holly comes out of the house and taps on the car window. When Rose looks outside, she is horrified to see her sister's smiling face inexplicably upside down. But in reality, she is once again hallucinating. Later that evening, Rose is at a restaurant, trying to keep herself busy, when she receives a sudden call from Joel. He says that he researched the creepy smiles all night, and learned something shocking. Altogether, there are 20 cases, and out of them 19 are self-kills with similar patterns. However, in the 20th case, a man named Robert disrupted the pattern by committing murder. When a random guy witnessed the incident, he committed the unthinkable, thereby continuing the pattern. Intrigued by the survivor, Rose decides to meet him face to face. Shortly after, she arrives at the prison where Robert is held. Rose approaches him and pretends to have a patient experiencing a similar ordeal. In response, Robert explains that the entity feeds on trauma, and the only means of escape is to commit a brutal act of murder in front of a witness, thereby traumatizing them. Hearing this, Rose becomes angry and vehemently shouts I cannot kill anyone. She inadvertently reveals that she has been cursed by the entity. As a result, Robert starts panicking, so the guards quickly arrive and take him away. Later, when Rose reaches home, Dr. Madeline unexpectedly pays her a visit. The two engage in a conversation, which is soon interrupted by a phone call. Rose reluctantly answers, only to discover that the caller is none other than Dr. Madeline herself. This means that the person next to her is the entity. Just then, the entity starts to smile and utters the words time is running out. In the next scene, we see Rose driving to the hospital, armed with a knife. She goes straight to the patient, Carl's room, and confronts him. Just then, Mr. Desai walks in, cautioning Rose that she shouldn't be around the patients. He also tries to inquire if she is doing well these days. But ignoring all this, Rose suddenly brings out her knife and repeatedly stabs Carl. It appears as if she wants to pass on the curse by murdering the poor man. However, despite several stabs to the abdomen, Carl continues to smile in a creepy way. He feels no pain at all. The next second, Rose awakens in her car, realizing that the entire sequence was yet another hallucination. Shortly after, Morgan approaches her vehicle and inquires why she's there but she hastily speeds away without providing any explanation. Noticing the presence of a knife in Rose's car, Morgan promptly contacts Joel, alerting him to the situation. Afterwards, Rose drives to her abandoned childhood home as it is the only place she can be away from people. Rose fears that she will end up hurting someone, so she wants to isolate her from the rest of the world. Upon arrival at the house, Rose hears a strange noise, and when she goes to investigate, she finds the entity of her mother. But our brave protagonist, is not scared anymore. She confronts the entity, asking her to stop bothering her at once. Following this, the movie goes into a flashback, to the day where Rose's mother had passed away. In a shocking turn of events, it is revealed that the woman was alive when Rose found her. However, the little girl didn't call for help, as she hated her abusive mom and wanted her to die. At present, the entity takes up another form, revealing a tall, scary figure. It swiftly attacks Rose and pins her to the ground, claiming that it'll forever torment her mind. However, Rose summons her inner strength and manages to break free by striking the entity with a lamp, causing it to catch fire. She then leaves the house, symbolically letting go of her trauma. After the harrowing ordeal, Rose drives back to Joel's house, hoping that he will let her spend the night. The latter agrees and assures her of his support, but as he speaks, a creepy smile forms on his face. 
Alarmed, Rose hastily exits the house, only to find herself still outside her old house. This reveals that her previous experience was a complete hallucination. Shortly after, the real Joel calls her name, causing panic to surge through her. She rushes back inside, barricading herself in the house so that Joel cannot have the curse passed to him. Right then, the entity rips off its skin to reveal its true form. This sight causes Rose to have a nervous breakdown, descending into a state of trauma-induced paralysis. Then, in a horrifying sight, the entity forces itself inside her body through her mouth. In the final scene, Joel manages to break through the front door, only to witness Rose setting herself on fire with a smile on her face, effectively passing the curse on to him. Thank you for watching movie and recap, please don't forget to subscribe. Hit the like button and gives us a like. Thank you.